Hey guys, welcome to Gary Williams Stole My Lawn Furniture post Super Bowl podcast. I have a special guest today. As you guys already know, uh, we all finished last in our um, high school classes, and this gentleman fits the bill. Delore Dave, welcome to the show, my man. Howdy, thanks for having hey. me. <laughs> um, I think we really need to start this day off with the big winner of the weekend, and that is a gentleman who has his hair in a bun at the moment. Um, yep, Dusty, why don't you me. take the floor and just brag? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, for those of you who didn't see me on Twitter or Instagram, uh, I hit a nice little 150 to one bet on, uh, Nick Taylor to win the waste management Phoenix open, um, 20 bucks to pay three grand. He was, uh, he was three shots back with four mm -hmm. holes to play. He birdied three of the last four holes, including birdie in 18, three times in a row to win in a playoff over Charlie Hoffman. It was Incredible. I was going absolutely apeshit at the bar, um, texting everyone that I knew. Uh, it was it was really fun. Um, we hit a couple other parlays for a couple more hundred bucks. Um, it was a good day yesterday for uh, for gambling for me. Did you guys get to watch it? Like the smartest man alive. I we know Delaware and I did. Yeah. yeah. I was rooting for the seagull. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun yesterday. I didn't think he really had much of a chance. Scheffler was kind of going crazy on the front nine and finishing up his, his round three. Um, but he hung in there all day, and then he just got at the end. He couldn't miss a putt. It was awesome. I mean, I thought the was fix awesome. was in when the the guy sponsored by Waste Management was going to win the Waste Management Open with Charlie Hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All. I mean, the couple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was wearing all green. He had his Waste Management shit on his shirt and on his hat. Felt like such an asshole. I was just telling Delaware before we started recording, but I love Charlie Hoffman. I've been betting on him forever. He always is in first place after day one of the Masters, and then he always collapses. I'm a big fan of his. <laughs> I've been a big fan for a while. I felt like such an asshole rooting against him, but I had some money yeah. on the line. It worked yeah. out for me. Yeah. Um, Rick, yeah, did you watch obviously... any of it? Yeah, there you go. Can you guys hear me first of all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got you. We can hear you. We got you, buddy. Brooks, did you uh, um, did you get a chance to watch any of it? Yeah, dude, I was uh, I was rooting for Charlie Hoffman as well <laughs> until I saw Dustin's uh, Dustin sent <laughs> Dustin Dustin sent his bets in sent his bets in and I was like uh, just didn't even look at him. I was like, All right, whatever. He's got Nick he's got Nick Taylor in the top twenty, and I was like, oh shit, he's got. Fifteen thousand to one odds for Nick Taylor to win this thing right now. I was like, I guess I got, I guess I got to root for Nick Taylor now. I don't even like but Canadians. That... Shit, yeah, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Bastards. Uh, we can talk a little golf later, but I think the big news yesterday was obviously the Super Bowl. Um, I didn't yeah. get to watch much of the first half. Honestly, I was kind of glued to the golf television. Um, it sounds like it was pretty boring to start. What did you guys, uh, did you guys see anything jump out at you in the first half? Yeah, why don't you grab this one, man? It was pretty boring until the middle of the third quarter. Uh, you know, I, I thought for sure uh, it'd be a real healthy dose of Christian McCaffrey. You know, for the third week in a row, the team playing the Chiefs stopped running the ball. All right, you know, I, I I can't figure out, you know, but, well, I know and just ran it down her throat thirty times. But are we that stupid? Are we that stupid? Or we were so we ran the ball eight times. So. No, I mean, I mean, just yeah. the average fan. I like, I feel like everyone sees this, but the fucking teams. Like, what is going on? I mean, I think that's one of the smartest offensive coordinators in football, and, and you know, they were winning and stopped running the ball. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't get it. Is it because just, Chris Jones started getting penetration? That's a question. I, I don't know the answer. I mean, I'm asking the masses here. It's because he seemed like he was in the backfield at all times. Yeah, I mean, he he was penetrating up the middle at all. He didn't get it. He never got to the quarterback, but he had quite a few pressures, I think, and a couple tackles for loss. Um, but I'm listening to a couple things that a lot of people who know, you know what they're talking about, uh, saying basically Spagnola was running cover zero for most of the game. And they were just just saying we're gonna blitz the shit out of Purdy, and you know we're gonna make we're gonna make him beat us down the field. And I mean, for the most part, they were able to keep 
Kittle, Debo, and Ayuk, I think, had like less than 70 or 80 combined yards, which is Kittle unheard of for this team. Third quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Kittle was completely um, silent until late in the game. Com- it was wild to look. I mean, th- this guy, Juwan Jennings for the Niners, uh, was probably the favorite to win the MVP three and a half quarters of the game until, you know, everything went crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, McCaffrey had 30 touches, but I think 12 or 12 or 13 of them were catches. Um, they kind of just stopped. Like Deli said, they just kind of stopped running the ball in the fourth quarter and overtime. Um, they had a third and a third and four inside the five before they kicked that field goal, uh, and, um, in overtime. And I'm just thinking to myself, just run the ball, run, run it up the middle twice. McCaffrey's going to get two or three yards every carry and they just they throw it in the end zone nothing happened and they get a goal and then as soon as Mahomes gets the ball the game's over that's what it feels like I, I took three things away from the game um that final play call really resembled something they did last year in the Super Bowl where they motion a guy out right or out wide motion him in they get that safety looking in and then he immediately when the play runs he immediately darts out to the to the flat again, or out to the right. We, we, and that, in this instance yesterday, out to the right. And that just opened it up. That's why McCall Horvitz scored the winning touchdown. That's the biggest thing. That's why Andy Reid is one of the best. The second thing I took away from the game is Brock Purdy has toys. He absolutely never flinched at all. And then last is that Brock Purdy has a weak motherfucking arm. I can't remember how many times people at the bar when we were watching it yesterday were saying, that like a duck, that like a floater, like a pop up. I think Dell even might have said it to me at one point or another. Yeah, Brian, um, you and I were watching, and he rolled out to the left, stopped and planted and threw back to the right, and the just like the ball was never never got there. It was in slow motion. He had no power on that ball. It, no. it was it was clearly a duck. Yeah, yeah. It felt Those like are the three big forever. takeaways I had. Yeah. How many times did they actually run the ball today? Look that up, Dustin. Did you find that? Yeah, McCaffrey had 22 carries, which, you know, it seems like a lot, but he had 22 carries. He had 15 of them in the first half. So that's, that's, you know, that's seven carries in the second half in overtime. In a one score (laughs) game. In a one score game that they had the lead in for 90% of it. It's, I, I just, I didn't understand it. Um, I was I was screaming at the TV, run the ball the whole time. Uh, uh, same thing I was doing when the Ravens played them. Um, I think the biggest takeaway for me is I don't think the Chiefs were very good this year, and they still won the Super Bowl. So uh, I just I guess that's a credit to Mahomes and Andy Reid. But I think Mahomes has kind of reached the the late in the fourth quarter or overtime when he gets the ball, I think he's going to score. It's like the Brady Manning thing. Like when he gets the ball at the end of the game, I'm, I was, I could have turned the TV off and said, the chiefs are going to win this game. He's going to score. It just, it just felt, it just felt inevitable. Um, I can't stand the guy, but he's got three Super Bowl wins and he's 28 years old. So I, I don't really think there's much else we can say about him. I just, yeah. I mean, what what are what are we doing? Why? It feels I lost like, it. It feels like it feels like people just gave them the Super Bowl, like as far as the Ravens and then the Forty ers with not. Like I just it, it, I don't understand. It blows my mind. It, like it, yeah. it, I'm sa- I'm sour about it because I feel like they just cakewalked <laughs> through. Like they just were given this. Yeah, three all... really good teams did not. None of them had a effort against the same team with this yeah. average effort that just appear, just works. I don't want these words to come out of my mouth, but I mean, you got to give them credit. They won on the road twice. They were underdogs in all three of those games. Yeah, uh, Houston had seven or eight uh, uh, penalties or timeouts called because of crowd noise in Baltimore. Mahomes called one timeout in the second quarter because of crowd noise. I mean, obviously, better, better in line much better quarterback than the youngster from Houston. And I, yeah. you know, that was, it, I've never been in a stadium louder than, than that AFC championship and me. It never faced it. Yeah. And think about this, something about the chiefs that we really don't really take, we don't take into account. They have a head coach, a former head coach, Steve Spagnuolo, 
as their D coordinator. They have a former head coach in McNaggy as their offensive coordinator. And those guys are never going to get looks for head coaching jobs ever again. They just kind of aged out. And so having that leadership, kind of going to what Dell's point is there, I mean, that, that has to play into account here. And then you can fucking start screaming at each other on the sidelines, but then keep your poise, which makes no sense. It's an oxymoron. I think that's very yeah. important. You know, they I just think, uh, think about retiring. Why would you retire with the best quarterback in the league at, in, in, his, in his prime? He's not even he's not even close to 30 yet. Yeah. It's, it's, I think uh, I, I, I didn't, to be honest with you, think Kelsey had that great game. And then I looked at the box score and he had nine catches for 93 yards. It was like the quietest superstar tight end and he had ever. big catches Two big like chunk every plays. other week. I mean, he just appeared out of nowhere and for, for 10 and 11 yards when they needed it to most. And... Yeah, and then he had that chunk play. Like It felt like they yeah, always that... had that chunk play where they just ran so, ran a drag, like about 10, 15-yard drag, and whoever, yeah, was right. man, whoever was man on him couldn't keep up with him. Right, right before I'd... the end of the game. I know this goes – it's with the game, but it goes a little off the field. I thought the officiating was fantastic. I liked how they had, like – 10 reps on each sideline that weren't actually dressed in stripes. They were in black jackets. I mean, that was awesome. There was nothing getting fucked up in that game. The, the, best, uh, the best sign of good refereeing is that you don't, hear, you don't hear a bunch of sports people talking about how the refereeing was after the game. Uh, I didn't hear anything this morning about the referees, you know, blue call or anything. They were, for the most part, they were quiet. They let them play a little, bit, and I don't think they called anything that wasn't that wasn't egregious. And really, it's a Super Bowl. You should let you should play it that, that way. After yeah. after their first quarter jitters, when they got that stuff out of the way, you know, both teams, there was never a significant penalty that decided anything. Yeah. yeah. I think the biggest one was in O two. Um when that the hold. Niners looked like they were going three and out when they got that holding call, but it was blatant holding call. The guy ran and he was trying to run a slot and McDuffie grabbed him. Um, and kind of hooked him, um, but that was that was looking like the Chiefs were going to get the ball without the Niners even even putting up a fight in overtime. All right, question for the group: Scale of one to ten, how much does it piss you off knowing the Ravens could have won this fucking Super Bowl? Yeah, I think we're all pretty uh, sour. I I just I, yeah, I just said I'm I'm pretty, pretty sour about it. Yeah. Well, I'd say an eight. I'll go history on it. In 2011, the Ravens were way better than they were in 2012. Agreed. We won a Super Bowl in 2012. So while I'm disheartened that we had an oppor- golden opportunity to do it at home, you know, well, I could watch it in person, you know, I don't see any reason, regardless what happens in free agency, that this team can't be just as effective, if not more effective, next year, even if they lose some some key pieces. So, yeah, it's stunk, yeah. but it's not over. Yeah, I agree. I just thought, like you said, like – 2011 felt like the year. Um, same, Absolutely. same with this, same, same with this year. So, a little sour. Hopefully, hopefully history will repeat itself. But yeah, I mean, I guess we lost one our our defensive coordinator. We'll probably lose Clowney. We'll probably lose Van Noy. Uh, probably lose Queen. Hopefully, we can get some Matt receivers. BK. Queen we'll and Matt BK. Yeah, we got to sign at least one of those guys. We'll fran- we'll franchise one of them. I'd assume that would be good. I think I think the the defensive coordinator move. Oh, you know, obviously it's an incredible story, especially if you're a Baltimore fan. But I mean, this this kid was a hot commodity and chose to stay here. He he had a very young coach in McDaniel try to take him to Seattle to be a defensive coordinator. You know, when you're a young coach, you want to work working for a young coach, and or chose to stay here because you know he he could he could walk right into the. You know, Harbaugh's not leaving anytime soon. Or can settle into that defensive coordinator job, and that and, and that job could be his, especially with Weaver going to to Miami. I mean, realistically, so, you know, he, like if he has another, if he has a good year next year, in the next two years, I mean, he's going to get head head coaching looks. I'm sure he, he already people yeah, are already thinking, thinking about that. Yeah, and his, what, his what? players are going to run through walls for him. I mean, you know, un, undrafted 100%. player to, to 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 defensive coordinator in that short period of time. And, you know, Brooks, speaking of losing, man, 
Um, hate to say it, but uh, it's time to take a pot of the face next week. <laughs> I figure probably probably the end of this week or uh, next week, whenever I got another set of hands. Nobody wants to see me pie myself, I'm sure. So no, I'm with Caitlin. We'll have, we'll have yeah. somebody. We need, we'll have uh, we need Caitlin and or involved in the, uh, in the pie. Thanks. <laughs> Um, yeah, for you, for those of you who don't don't know the word, privy to the information. Last week's podcast, um, we picked uh, a couple of jersey numbers uh, for those to, for whoever scored the first touchdown, the game, and um, Brooks was the furthest from the pin, and so he has to take a pie in the face the next time we record. Because Brooks um, so doesn't if know you guys how to follow simple a directions. <laughs> Hey, Dell, given that you're the special guest, why don't you pick the filling that has to go in the pie <laughs> for Brooks? I mean, you, know, just, you want me to be nice or not nice? <laughs> I want you, you know what, Dell? You know us so well. I mean, go for it, man. Whatever you want to do. I mean, this is the first. You, get a, uh, if you can get a dangerously you... delicious pie delivered out here. That'd be great. <laughs> oh, I can make that happen. That, can, we can make that happen. It, Del, it can't be a hot pie. We're not, we're not playing with shepherd's pie or anything. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have steak for air to the face. Uh, but I mean, you know, but I, I think, you know, like, good old key lime would, you know, would be nice. <laughs> All right. All right. Right. Key lime it is. Key lime's good. I'm on board with that. That's something right. you can pick up at, at a local bakery or grocery oh, store. Brooks, that's going to be too hard to find. I'll, I'll <laughs> ship it to you. Yeah, we can send there one you to you, buddy. Yeah. You yeah. can send one from, <laughs> D- from Dangerously Delicious. Yeah, those are my people. I said we can send one of those. That'd be great. Whoever, whoever we want to support, really. If, if yeah, Brooksy, just send the sure. address, man. Just send the address. We'll Absolutely. send it out to you. Yeah, we want to support as many local Baltimore businesses as we can for 100. We'll uh, yeah. we'll get that we'll get that pie out to you, Brooks. Hell yeah, buddy. <laughs> so, sounds good. Um, I I got one more thing from the game, man. I uh, I just felt so bad for Drake Greenlaw. Jog on the field. Fucking tearing his Achilles! Holy shit! That's brutal. I mean, this is putting my wrapping my mind around like you try so hard and you train so hard and that mental capacity you have to have to play in that game, and then you tear it just jogging on the field. Mm-hmm. That, That's got to that take the air good. out of the sidelines too. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, he's he's one of the better players on that defense too. Him and Warner were like Roquan and Queen, but but. Even, almost even better this year um, as li- at linebacker. It was it was really yeah. That's that sucked to watch. What do you guys feel um, about Super Bowl Saturday instead of Super Bowl Sunday? Um, I mean this is going to be one of the most unproductive work days in the whole country. I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> right up there with uh, you know the Monday March Madness starts, which is mm, the most yeah. unproductive day and work yeah. day of the of the year. Yeah. Um, and we got yeah. that right around the corner, so we got a couple of productive Mondays coming. <laughs> it, it's got it's got to be financial. The NFL has to know that they'd make less, or, or they would. Move. I mean, you know, they've already. I mean, the Super Bowl would be in March if they could pull it off. No. Yeah. I I heard yeah. some little McAfee today that made a lot of sense. Is that with the 18th game coming, like that is definitely going to occur. You would yep. then push the season out one more week, and President's Day will follow. The Super Bowl, and that's a federal holiday. Kids have off school. That's kind of like a built-in, like it's a built-in. It becomes a national holiday at that point. Super Bowl holiday plus President's Day. Yeah, love that. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, love that. Count. I guess the countdown. Brian, is what, uh, what, what Dustin said: thirty-six days till March Madness, 46, 45 days to Opening Day, fifty-six yeah. days until the Masters. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, there you go. Uh, Pitchers or catchers for the Orioles report on Thursday this week. Baseball so we season, are, baby. We are getting into baseball season. We are baseball guys. Um, real quick before we uh, skip over for the Super Bowl, Brian, you had a couple. Uh, you had a couple picks last week. Homes over passing attempts and yards. Both of those hit. Great job. Thank you, Biscuit. And we all we all liked McC- McCaffrey's receiving yards. And we all like McCaffrey's receiving yards. That hit in the first half. It might have been. Hit, it might have hit in the first quarter. I think he ended up with eighty or. or 80 or more. Um, my favorite bet was under one and a half yards for the shortest touchdown. It did not hit. Seven out of 80 that hit. 
Um, and also Chris Jones and Nick Bosa had zero combined sex, which is uh, pretty crazy, Nuts. I think. Nuts. Yeah. I thought Bosa, I um, thought Bosa had like a calf a sack on that one, but I guess they didn't give it to him. But Bosa was, it seemed like Bosa was chasing Mahomes around the whole first half. Um, from what I was watching, like I said, I was more focused on golf. It seemed like Bosa was chasing him around, but Mahomes is just too good. He's so good at getting rid of the ball quickly. And, you know, if he needs to get out of the pocket and, and throw it away, he's just so good at that stuff. From what I saw, Bosa was really setting an edge and allowing Chase Young and um, Armstead to come in and just dominate. I mean, Armstead hit yeah. Mahomes at one point. I was like, damn, that looks like it hurts. That's like yeah. Dusty and Dell's hack on me. I was like, holy shit, that looked bad. <laughs> Um, but, uh, it, it seemed like Bosa really was just kind of, I'm not going to call him a decoy, but setting his teammates up on the other side of the line. I have trivia for you guys that we can soak on while we finish this out over the next, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Um, there have been four defensive Super Bowl MVPs in the 2000s. Can you name them? Do I have to give an answer yet? One is Ray I got Lewis. All, I got all four. You got all four? All right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Del, Del, you want to give you want to give a shot? I'll get Del, no, you, no, no. I'll let you guys, you guys, you guys stew on it. I'm a I'm a moron. I'm really good at uh knowing got, stupid information and not I knowing important two, information. I so I don't have any of uh, any fast. Ray Lewis That's, is one for sure. I got yeah. two off the top of my head with one one being Ray Lewis. What's the other one? Ronde Barber. No, nope. E. nope. Really? Same, same defense. Wrong guy. Wrong Oops. guy. Nope. A safety, safety. Dexter Jackson won that Dexter, MVP with three interceptions. Really? Dexter yep. Jackson. And that's, Ron, that's Ron, on the same, had the. That's on the, the same defense as Rondé Barber, John Lynch, Warren Sapp, Simeon Rice, Eric Brooks. Those are five Hall of Famers, and Dexter yeah. Jackson won the MVP. <laughs> and Ron, Rondé had a pick well six. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, uh, more more recently in the 2010s, I believe Malcolm Butler won when he picked off uh, Russell Wilson in the end zone. Did he not? Was I wrong not, about that? You were wrong. Oh, wow. You were wrong with that one. Tom Brady won that Super Bowl. Malcolm Butler should have won that. Okay. Uh, I know Tom Von Brady, Miller won. Tom, Tom Brady actually gave him the truck he won for winning MVP. Wow. <laughs> oh, I know so Von Miller nice. won. With the Broncos, Bob Miller Bob won. Miller won yeah. 100% I remember they said that the last time. Panthers. I could have sworn one. it was Malcolm Butler. Um, you have his name's Malcolm name. or Michael or something. Malcolm Jenkins is that it? Mal Malcolm Smith from the Seattle Seahawks. He uh, yeah. picked off Peyton Manning twice, one for a pick six. Uh, okay. I wouldn't have got that one. <laughs> that was the year that that I think that was Peyton's first year in Denver. The year he threw like fifty touchdowns. Yeah. Um, the, the, his first like, year in Denver, like the Seahawks replay in the Super Bowl that year. <laughs> his first year in Denver, I believe, was when the Ravens beat him um, in the AFC divisional round, and then he went to the Super Bowl the following year. Huh, makes sense. So wait, that was the Jacoby Jones Hail Mary then? That yes, was, well, that was the, his first year in Denver. Wow. Yeah, I believe that was his first year in Denver because then I think we played Denver the next year to open the, the season and got smoked. Oh, yeah. Like he threw like seven TDs. Yeah, fun story about that. That was the Brooks graduate from college, and I didn't get to watch that game because I Good had job, to go Brooks. support my brother. <laughs> Brooks. What? Well done, buddy. I, I, I well watched done. that game. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> not that's not that <laughs> game that absolutely lit us, lit us up. Uh, I was sitting in the stands at your uh, your graduation from college, watching, trying to follow it on my phone because this was before you could watch games all over your phone. And, yeah, the the anyway. first game of the season. <laughs> the first yeah, I believe so. I wouldn't have graduated then. Did you ever graduate? Do we even know? Yeah, maybe, maybe you <laughs> didn't. I don't know. <laughs> I, I remember where I, I watched. I know we're I, playing against Peyton Manning when you were grad. Might not have been there. I was because I, I was going to say I remember Jesus. watching the, watching that game. I was at Della Rose's and we got in out in the street, and we got e. when he torched us. <laughs> so heads, heads, bent heads every time in the Super Bowl because e. what five out of six now, six out of seven. 
Nah, I'm I'm out on that. Yeah, I'm out. Um, I like I like Benton Tails uh, every time, pretty much every time because that's uh, I don't I don't want to flip flop. Just like when I'm betting roulette, I like to black every time because then if I red and black it, I'm gonna be pissed off at myself. So uh, that's why I always take tails as well. Yeah. Five Kelly, what's uh, you guys have any other thing for the weekend? You guys want to talk real about? quick? Yeah, Delhi. What, what do you when you do you go to the casino, Del? Uh, very little. If you go to the casino, what game are you playing? Uh, I I, I like uh, I like the three card poker and I like the roulette. The roulette. If 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 I if I was smart enough, I'd play craps, but there's too many things for my small brain to keep up with at one time. <laughs> and, uh, but it always <laughs> looks so fun. <laughs> I played craps one time for like five hours and. I- that was the only five hours of my life that I knew what was going on at a craps table. Uh, since then, it's left my brain, and I, I've never been able to figure it back out. <laughs> All right, so so now that now that football is over, and that's what I'm throwing. It's baseball season, boys. It's ready. To, it's time to fire up. I mean, let's go. I'm I'm excited. Hundred percent. Yep. Pumped. Um, yeah, we still got a couple big free agents left to sign. I'm uh-huh. sure they'll be uh, they'll be getting to camps before spring training is over. Bellinger, uh, Montgomery, Snell. Um, uh, I don't think the right. I don't think the Orioles are done. I think there's another, you know, sizable move that's going to happen before opening day. What do you think? Del, like, what, what, what position? What, what position? I mean, I, when's the last time we signed an actual bat that was you know, you know it's, there, there's got to be somebody that that fits in there with these youngsters that it's. Uh, you know that that, that can put a big stick kind of guy. Jim but Tommy. I mean, it's, I I I don't mean I don't see our payroll go adding twenty five million a year, but there's there's got to be somebody. Jim Tommy. I mean, something, the, something I've been seeing. Uh, adding a veteran bat is something we did in the past when we were good uh, in the, to 2012, 2014, 2016 uh, run. Uh, we signed Jim Tome, um Nelson Cruz was probably the biggest one. Um, a name I've been seeing uh, around a lot is J.D. Martinez. He's been taking one-year deals the last couple of years. I wouldn't be surprised if we signed him. I mean, um, that's the kind you know, of power it's, it's I'd love probably to wouldn't be that expensive. Yeah, 100%. Is he, is he left-handed or right-handed? He is right-handed. He's right-handed. right-handed. And that, that mold does not fit his bill then. Because you're going to gonna scare right-handed yeah, hitters away. He's not a power guy, though. Yeah, yeah the... But, Look, he's a he's in he's in his high third. He's in his late thirties. He's trying to you know probably at this point chase some wins and you know get his collect his last couple of paychecks. I mean, who's to say he can't start hitting some doubles the opposite way? And, and, and he's I, always I mean, been the, a good. The, the, the one will call these guys home runs, but it doesn't necessarily call it some hits. Because if it was going to be a home run, unless Bo Jackson's out there, it's still going to be a it's still going to be a double An extra base hit. Yeah. It should be, unless it's floating. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. and to another thing, though, know, we can't we can't just go nine straight lefty. We have to put some some ballots in the lineup. We got to have some oh, yes. hitting. And somebody and somebody like him, it's a veteran. You know, he can handle the bat a little. Um, not necessarily just him. I'm sure there's other guys out there we're not speaking of. But um, before opening day, I can see us making one more smaller move. I think if the trade deadline is. It's when we can get aggressive, you know, if we if we get off to a hot start, um, I think the trade deadline is probably going to be a big time for us. I mean, I hope. Um, I can't remember the last time I had an exciting time watching the Orioles trade deadline. It was when we got Tim Beckham <laughs> in 2016. <laughs> I'm trying to think of, like, who would be available at the trade deadline, people that might be sellers, shitty teams that are going to look to dump, like well, a big bat. Teams that are had high expectations going in, like the Mets last year, everyone thought they were World Series favorites, and then you know they dumped Grom and Verlander. Well, not dumped Verlander and, uh, and Scherzer. Scherzer at the deadline. Yeah, yeah. not the Grom. The Grom signed in the offseason. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it could be a team like that. Um, somebody who has high expectations um, but that's not quite living up to them. Hey, hey, what Delhi and I? Roster? Votto. Votto is not signed. 
right now. Yeah. He's a I mean, you know, if, if, he, if he was cheap, that would be an amazing piece to have on your bench. 100%. I, I right. like him as a person. I mean, he's a, if you ever hear him talk on some of these talk shows, he's a great dude. And he's not hitting for power that much anymore. And I don't know what Cincinnati's ballpark conventions are, but he's not hitting for power anymore, but he's still a contact guy. I mean, you can't have much better experience in the clubhouse than that guy with as young as we are. Yeah. For sure. And a veteran left in a bat to teach these kids, and that's invaluable. I'm sure Jim Tome may help the shit out of any of our young guys. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you, you've heard how much, you know, we, we you know, Dell and I love Tony Gwynn, and Dawson's a Tony Gwynn hater, but um, one not, of the, all right. you're still on my phone as Tony Gwynn hater, but anyway. Um, <laughs> but, there was a stat that Tony Votto never hit a foul ball to the right side. He's a left-handed bat. He never hit a foul ball to the right side for two seasons. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? I remember, was I, awesome. remember he, I remember you telling telling us a couple years ago there was a stat that Joey, Va- Joey Votto's only popped out in his career. Like, I think he's played 15 years. He's only popped out like 12 times in his career or something it's like un- that. No reason to make <laughs> that up. That's unbelievable. It's, the guy was a stud. Yeah. He is a stud. <laughs> Yeah, still. How is, old yeah. is he? What thirty yeah. eight? Yeah, he's he's a, he's older older man. He's uh, late thirties. Yeah, I heard hey, a crazy he's stat not... the other day. This stat will fucking blow your mind. Double or Dave, they've been to a fucking opening day. I always made too much money. Three <laughs> <laughs> It's most money oh, ever man. made in my bartending career was on opening day. The Orioles. Played that at one o'clock, and the and the Terps won a basketball title that night. Oh man, that was on a Monday. That yeah. was on a Monday. That was opening day that the Terps beat Indiana. Yep. Yep. Oh, man. That's pretty crazy. What a- I made almost as much as you won yesterday on a on that Canadian fella. <laughs> <laughs> on that Canadian, that's big money in there too, for sure. Heck yeah. <laughs> what my inflation? blood pressure that's, gotta, that's gotta be like seven grand this today <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, let's get let's get deli a ticket we gotta get brooks a queue on time we gotta get yeah, yeah, yeah all right that's that's that that's deli and i's uh task uh between now and uh tomorrow is get deli or get up brooks here key on pie mail brooks send the uh send your address to us please we'll uh, mail it out there but absolutely yeah. And we'll uh, we'll, we'll do, give we'll dangerously do. delicious a little bit of Brooks, uh, do you like key lime pie? Yeah. Well, you're gonna like sure. it. You're gonna like it next week. I don't like have you, a choice now. Do you, do you like, <laughs> he's, gonna, he's gonna be eating it off himself for a week. <laughs> you find it in my crevices. Oh, that's good. Um, that's anybody good. going I do to want spring to, uh, training this year? I'm not. I'm not planning. I didn't hear on you. It. Sorry. Didn't anybody hear going you. to anybody going to spring training this year? Nothing I've actually never been. Have you guys been before? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sarasota is a blast of a town. Uh, you know, it's, it's, the beaches are great. They drink a lot. You know, it's, 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 it's Baltimore people sit in well there. Yeah, I went down for Merrick's bachelor party. That was a really good time. I'm thinking we about went to the, uh, That's something that's on my list I want to do at some point. I never uh, got we, around to yet. Yeah, we we went down. Um, myself and Matt Milburn, we went to a place called the Daiquiri Deck, and we just walked in for Mary's bachelor party after going to one of the games, and we just ordered the right side of the menu. Le- legitimately, just got, we'll take the right side of the menu, and it was all <laughs> daiquiris. <laughs> and those bartenders did you? Oh uh, yes. So well, I think and they're then, pool. Uh, I think at the Daiquiri Deck they have like the pool, like they're already pre-made. And stuff. Oh, that's. And then, that's- we went to a Blue Jays game in Dunedin, which is, I guess, like 20, 30 minutes away from Sarasota. And that's actually, Dell. No, that's where um, Swaranski's live now. Yep. Yep. And there, there's a bar there called Bowser's. And uh, with your game ticket, you got three Rolling Rock Pounders with your game ticket for free. I love it that. was awesome. That's it amazing. was great. <laughs> we stayed for three pitched outs at the uh, Blue Jays game for Mary's Bachelor Party. <laughs> <laughs> so and, we went to and you guys all got three pounders out of it. That was hell. <laughs> or down low for Bowser's is a great name for a bar. That is. Yeah. 
What's uh, that's what's the first time we ever th- saw Tim Mesa? That's the first time we ever saw Mesa. He was uh, he was pitching for the Blue Jays. Yeah, I was gonna say, what's everyone's thought on? Uh, obviously, we're an Orioles show, a Baltimore show here, but what's our thought on having a Blue Jays guy on to talk some uh, spring training baseball this year? Tim, I'm in. I'm in for sure. Tim, and I'll see. I'll, I'll see if I can get McCormick players. on. Yeah, uh, and then okay. one of the kids I coached. Um, uh, Spencer Horowitz is probably going to get called up to the show this year. Dell, you'll like this. Spencer Horowitz's father is the deli man at uh, Deep Squally's. Oh, yes? Yeah. <laughs> like a man who knows his way around the meats. <laughs> man knows his meat. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, before... <laughs> I don't know what else we're going to talk about uh, um, from the weekend, but I do want to start giving out a, a golf bet every week. Um, had a good weekend last weekend, so I'm going to try to parlay that into a segment on, on the your show. high horse. <laughs> yeah. wow, so uh, high this horse. week, I like my 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 favorite bet this week. I like Homa to top 20 and Sahit Gala to top 30. Um, Homa's been in the top 10 in this tournament three years in a row. We came in first, tenth, and second in the last three years, um, and he's he's always at the top of his game. He's one of the best players in the world, and Sahit Gala couldn't. Couldn't hit a tee shot in the fairway to save his life yesterday. He still shot two under, came in place. Um, that's plus 152 on DraftKings. You like uh, you like gambling on golf, if you trust me, after a hot week. Um, that's something I like. <laughs> I like being ride ride the there. hot hand. Ride the hot oh, hand. Yeah. Anybody, is there any prop bets for what Tiger is going to be wearing this week since he's probably obviously not wearing Nike unless they have some stipulation where he, uh, he's going to wear it the rest of the year? Or he leaves or something. He's definitely not going to be wearing Nike. Um, most people on the internet seem to think it's going to be some sort of sub subdivision line um, of tailor made, um, which wouldn't surprise me. Um, but it, it also wouldn't surprise me if he went the same way Roger Federer went and kind of started his own clothing line, um, because you know, that's something that him and Charlie could could grow together. And I think that's probably what's the most important to him at this point is. Um, spending as much time with his kid and, you know, you know, helping him grow. Um, but yeah, it's going to be awesome to see Tiger on the golf course. It's always, it's always electric. Um, he's 131 to one to win. Um, he's not going to win. Even when he was uh, the best golfer on the planet for those 15 years, uh, he never has won at this golf course. This is one of the only golf courses that they play every year on the PGA tour that he has not won. Yeah. He has never won at Riviera. He's come in second, I think four or five times. He has never won there. Um, oh, so, yeah. I that's, mean, where, that's where he made his debut, right? His professional debut, correct. I've never heard. Uh, yeah, at Riviera. It used to be called the LA Open, and then now it's called the Genesis Invitational. Genesis. You remember those days where it used to be Tiger or the field? How ridiculous yeah. is that? I mean, it's, it's starting it's to get that, that way that... with Scheffler. I was going to say, it kind of feels that way with Scheffler over the past couple of years. Like, every time... Every time he's in the hunt, I just assume he's just going to turn it on and, or he just runs away with it. And I, I didn't realize they were talking yesterday, Dustin, in the golf tournament that Scheffler's first win was at Waste Management, what, two years ago? And he won. I, he's I, won. And we know what he's done since then. He's been winning every tournament it feels like he's in. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it sucks. Uh, it sucks trying to bet him because I want to, I want to bet on him, but he's, He's like four to one to win the golf tournament, which is bananas. There's you know, the best golfers on the planet every week. You can't bet on a guy that's four to one. <laughs> anyway, we don't we don't have to go super into depth we'll about do, golf. Uh, we'll do a yeah, golf. We can do a little we'll bit do, more golf. We'll try to do a maybe we'll do a golf segment here before the Genesis or something since it's going to be Tiger's debut. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, and then yeah. we got to do see what everyone's schedule looks like. Yeah, we'll do some we'll do some more golf uh, moving forward. But yeah, for from now on, we'll uh, I'll try to give out a little uh, a little golf bet every week. Um, De- uh, you know, De- we'll speaking of how betting, De- how that goes. Speaking of betting, Delhi's a little salty. The Chiefs didn't score a touchdown in the first quarter. So throw it out there. There <laughs> <laughs> uh, was a piece on, on uh, Christian McCaffrey on I don't remember which site he was on, but it was a you had to bet twenty five thousand. It was a one. Anytime touchdown by McCaffrey and it paid a hundred grand. What? I mean, you had to pay twenty five G's to get in. You had to bet twenty five grand. Wow! But it paid a hundred if if you won. Who, who was your? Who, it. 
Who was your sports accountant? Well, in this one, I mean, is no, that a real was on, site? This was, not, this was on, a, on, a, on, a, you know, on a national site. Thanks. Yes. You had wow. to bet 25. There was no $25 version. It was, it was a $25,000 bet. I bet Jesus. that there was uh, so many of those sporting groups that took that bet. <laughs> Every single one of them took that bet. I think he was minus, he was minus money to, to score a touchdown. I mean, he scored a touchdown, I think, in like 25 of his last 28 games or something. Like that. Yeah. The most impressive thing from the Super Bowl was Usher's clothing change. Took him 90 seconds to put on roller skates. I was thinking I mean, that's that Less than that. Less than that. I was like, how in the hell did he get these goddamn skates on? I thought that they like slid, slid heels onto the shoes that he was already wearing or something. I don't know how he did that. That was nuts. I was thinking the exact same thing, dude. That's what. What did everyone think about the halftime performance? Since this is a topic on Twitter, uh, Alicia Keys is top notch, and she was fantastic. So, yeah, she's she's fantastic in every sense of the word. That's all I can are you, say. Are you are you saying greatest perform halftime performance of all time? No, all no, these no, not even close. Not even close. Prince, We're not Prince wins. That. Prince, and, and I'll die on Prince, Prince was, Hill. Yeah, Prince was Prince was great. <laughs> Prince. Um, very um, good though. I, I I enjoyed I enjoyed watching it. I'm not a huge Usher, and I don't I don't I don't know if anybody in this group is. Maybe you are. Um, I thought it was good though. I thought he you know thought he performed well. I thought it was was fun to watch. I thought the the roller skating thing was super unique and, and cool. Um, and like yeah, like we Deli said, Alicia Keys is yeah. I'm all she tears in. it up every time. Every when time yeah, she yeah, ripped the shirt off, I thought it was Brian Rogers for a second. Yeah, <laughs> baby. <laughs> <laughs> I got more hair, and uh, <laughs> I'll I'll say this. Um, someone made a comment last night that I thought was very apropos. He is the millennial version of Michael Jackson. Like he does the dancing, he can sing, he can kind of yeah. mix genres. Now I don't. I'm not saying that we all agree with it, but it it kind of hit a note. I was like, hey, he might be right. Is he a? He was a strong, too? strong halftime show. Yeah, yeah. It was good. It wasn't yeah, too I, much. I mean, obviously, I don't think I don't think it's very very uh, attainable to reach the levels of fame that Michael Jackson reached in the the eighties and nineties. But you know, as a as far as a modern day comparison, I think that's pretty uh, pretty perfect. And he did he did a little homage to Michael Jackson with that one glove kind of thing, um, the roller skating thing. Then he came out looking like a you know a transformer or whatever the fuck that outfit was. I want to know how much that fucking piano clock that Alicia Keys is playing. That was sweet. <laughs> sweet. <laughs> yeah, that thing looked like it's like I I don't know. That was weird. It was a it was a very interesting looking piano for sure. How do you move a piano onto a stage that quickly? It was probably underneath oh, the stage, and it came up on it, it came up, up on the yeah. It was it was on the stage. All right, no, that makes sense. I was gonna say they they had a bunch of roller skates. Could have roller skated it onto there. Yeah. <laughs> I was. What was um? Someone also said, "What if Taylor Swift came out of the box and dropped down like fifty cented two years ago, like <laughs> upside down?" <laughs> yeah. yeah. Honestly, that that was another great halftime performance with uh with all the old school rappers that came out. See, yeah, like, that was, that was last year. Two years ago. Last year, two years ago. Two years ago. I can't remember. Really, really, they, all, uh, they all blend together. And last year was Rihanna. She was like always yeah. on like a vertical, like she was like a elevated on a cloud or something like that. Yeah. Uh, Either way. One of the well, one of the crazy things, no, no Gatorade bath. That was 12 yeah, below. By the way. Purple. 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 Was it purple? purple. When I was seeing no no Gatorade bath. But was it purple? That was they, one of the prop uh, they, bats. They showed it after the fact, like in a slow motion. They got him after, oh, okay. like he hugged a bunch of people. It was purple. PC lost yeah. a bet to me because I picked purple. He said blue. He said it looked like it was watered down blue. Uh, it was purple. <laughs> it was purple. I because one of the big bets that uh, I don't know if any of you guys follow Gabe Morenci, um, but one of his big bets was no Gatorade bath because he thought. Because he thought it was going to be a walk-off field goal or something, and it was just going to get forgotten. That was kind of his whole deal. But yeah, I, I was Dustin. That was that was definitely one of the bigger prop bets I was seeing was the no Gatorade bath. But yeah, definitely huh. purple. 
Real quick, does that make uh, does that win make any rate top five coach of all time, hands down? Yes. Yes. I, think it, I don't see any other how how you can't be. That's name them. I name, totally name, agree. Name five other coaches. I mean, ahead it's, of them. it's 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 some combination of Belichick. Landry, Shula, Lombardi, Bill Walsh. Walsh. Um, that's those are those are the names that come up most often. I would say um, you could throw obviously. There's a couple guys you can give or take in there, um, but I think look, he's won three Super Bowls. He took the Eagles to a couple more. He's he's one of the best coaches of all time. I don't I don't really it's, it's an argument. And his co- and his coaching tree is large. Uh, it's huge. Yeah. You know, it's- I mean us us as Ravens fans know for sure. I mean John Harbaugh is one of the guys. And he's I think good. Harbaugh has a growing tree now. Look how many, you know, how is how many he promoted just this year. Yeah, yeah. So, sure. you know, I think the Harbaugh tree is a legitimate tree now. I know, I know Harbaugh. we're going off the off the spectrum, but here, but one of the names that always gets forgotten is Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson, I, he he didn't coach for that long. Won two Super Bowls, left a third Super Bowl to Barry Switzer, won a national championship. I think he won two national championships, maybe in Miami. And he just didn't go as long as these other guys. And if he went as well, long that, as other guys, I think he'd be right there. I agree. I, I think that's that's think, probably why people don't put him in there because he doesn't have all the wins, just because he, he didn't does. do it. I mean, but I mean, people love to. I mean, John Madden, he didn't do it for very long either. But his his yeah. winning percentage was crazy. I think it's still the highest of all time. I think John Madden's the highest of all. Madden Madden was very very vocal how he thought you. Need- you could only you should only be a coach for a certain amount of the years and then get out. And he was he was really a trendsetter um, in a lot of ways. And I completely forgot to bring him up. His name should 100 percent be mentioned in that in that category of best coaches of all time for sure. Real quick, Jimmy also John- does uh, sorry does uh what, what do we got? What do you guys think, Kyle Shanahan? Uh, is is he cursed? Is he in the Steve Young get your monkey off your back kind of thing, or is it just is it come and going and he's just he can't win in these big games, or is it is it luck? What do you guys think? Deli, rip this one because you were talking about the overtime stuff. Well, the, I was walking through the bar a little while ago, and one of the big networks on a, on a bar TV said San Francisco players saying they didn't know the overtime rules. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I would think you know, he's such a such a great coordinator for so many years, but he, you know, it's it's. This is quite a few blemishes, you know, on his on his postseason record. So, I mean, if they didn't know the postseason rules, I mean, that definitely falls to the coach. But I, I don't think yeah. he's cursed. But he definitely let this one through his fingers. Yeah, yeah, that's something that the, the Bills that, and so did the Ravens. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> something that should be emphasized when when your Harvard guy Usechek's coming out and saying in the press conference that he didn't know. I mean that yeah. that should have been a point of emphasis, or at least bring the team yeah. together before. Well, Absolutely. I think the, I think it was twenty eight years since the, a Super Bowl overtime. No, 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 no. It's been like five years because uh, the okay. Patriots won one overtime. But the new rules. Uh, where this each is the first. This is the, the first ball. one with the new rules. Yeah. The yeah, only way that the the only way that a team could have won that didn't possess the ball is if they got a safety on the first a possession. Defense. Defensive touchdown on the first possession. Yeah, you said. yeah. Touchdown or and then I think people were getting confused with like the quarter or the, the clock running out. But Romo did a good job explaining that, like the clock doesn't really matter; it's just a quarter. So yeah. And then I saw Chris Jones said that they were going to go for like if if San Francisco scored a touchdown that first drive, they were going to go for two and go for the win. If they oh scored. really? That's what he was saying. But I mean, he's also a fucking defensive end, so I don't. <laughs> maybe he was on the play, the offensive play. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I wasn't able to listen to much of the first half. How was it, Roman? Was it good? He was good. He was really good. I mean, it's all it's all your take. I mean, people love him, people hate him, and he's so yeah. hot and cold with a, with everybody. He I, was I don't drawing know. I like up him. plays. He was drawing up plays. Like I guess they have like a little board there or whatever, like a telestrator. Where he could actually draw lines, and at one point he drew a line where the exact prior to the play he drew he drew a line like it was a flat like a flat out or something like that, and the ball went right to where his line was prior to he drew it prior to the play, and that's exactly where it went. He goes, "This is what this is what I'm seeing." Bang. Yeah, yeah, I like See, Romo. He is who he is. I mean, he's a little corn dog. <laughs> I like yeah, him for sure. 
is that Brady? Dude? That Brady? That Brady comments deal is that was Fox or CBS? Fox. 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 Everything with Greg Fox. Olson. Every everyone's like, what's going to happen with Greg Olson? Because I I check Greg Olson's awesome. So Greg Olson, good looking man, rated his job. Uh, he's going to get a job somewhere. I, I got a weird feeling. He's going to be good. He's going to get bumped down to the Fox second crew, which isn't a bad deal. But you lose money, actually, in that. I didn't realize this. There's, like, tiers. Like, you get, like, $10 million for being the first guy, like, the, the first crew, and, like, $5 million for being second crew. Making up those numbers there. But he's going to get a job with, like, Amazon or, say, Al Michaels ever decides to step down. He's going to jump into one of those roles pretty quickly. I don't think he stays with Fox this year. I think somebody's going to pay him a bunch of money to come come commentate their first string somewhere. And obviously this is all speculation, but I don't know how long Chris Collinsworth is going to keep doing this too. I mean, he could obviously step into the Sunday night role too. Yeah. Sure. I mean, sure. Yeah, I can see that. Anything else you guys uh, want to add from the weekend or anything you guys want to talk about before we close up here? No, I, w- I want to say thank you to Delhi for joining us today. You know, he's oh, man, pleasure, man, guys. busy, 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 He's getting closer to the camera and see that beard just grew a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll have we'll have a we'll have a bourbon since bourbon pick or something here soon since we got a yeah, little time but before baseball before baseball starts. We can we're, we're gonna have some time to bullshit probably. So and yeah, Brian we should one in the beast because Dusty's taking us to Sizzler. Sizzler. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. I don't know that I've ever been to a Sizzler, to be honest. With you. <laughs> well, or sound for everything, baby. <laughs> Deli, keep your car keys close to you. All right, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, that's yeah we may tell the story skills. one day. We don't want. To. <laughs> I got video. I owe you, I owe you a couple of bags of cheddar horseradish chips for that day. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got He's... multiple text messages and voicemails from Deli saying I'm going to fucking kill your brother. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just spit a little bit. <laughs> Any, you guys, you guys worked all weekend. Anything, anything fun happened at the bar that worth noting? Um, it's a pretty quiet one. That's yeah, I mean, we were no, uh, no, 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 no police calls. No, uh... no dumb shit. Yeah, our our bars were um rough housing. Yeah, our bars, the Trosser and the Pig and Rooster, were were totally fine. Um. Some other rough housing, some other bars that is for another day. A little more crowd for the Super Bowl than I thought that we have in years past. And it was, you know, it's, you know, it's just usually such a holiday party or you know, a home party kind of day. But we actually had a half decent day. So that was good. Yeah. 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 Same here. Awesome. We, yeah. yeah. I was proud to see it. City, uh, city behaved themselves very well. The club did very well. St. Gerard's, um, shout out to St. Gerard's, did very well. Um, so yeah, it was it was a good one. I'm sure I mean, the Grumwald Club did pretty good. Uh, Delhi went to the yeah. Grumwald last night. It's a good time. Yeah, man. Good times. Awesome. Hopefully nice. the bars down in Buzz. Uh, uh, City did well, Dusty. And yeah, actually, we're uh, we're closed uh, the week the week after the Super Bowl, and I I requested off yesterday a couple months ago for the Super Bowl because I figured you know the Ravens had a chance to be in it. Um, but I went to Bowl on the Beach. It was, it was pretty busy there. Uh, usually it's like you said, you guys said it's slower at the bars, and most people have people over their house order take out but i mean there was a lot of a lot of local last night from what i saw down here oh yeah man well hey boys nice uh, good times deli thank you very much for joining us um yes i'll be we'll here see anytime you, you want i'll come delaware. Hell yeah, it, delaware thanks for your time brother we'll get you and foil on and you got a, we got a righty and a lefty uh coming yeah. in <laughs> 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 so, all right, guys. You guys have a good one. Take care right, of yourselves. Boys. I'll talk to you guys later. See you, boys. See you guys. Thanks. Next week, same time, same place.